Welcome to the Idea Climbing Podcast. Today, we're talking about how to create healthy peak performance and overcome adversity with my guest, serial entrepreneur, peak performance coach, and TEDx speaker, Jennifer Watson. We discuss topics including how to grow during times of adversity, the art and science of neuro rewiring and how to apply it in your life, how to create a calm state of mind that leads to higher productivity and more golden nuggets of advice. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Idea Climbing Podcast. Today, I'm here with Jennifer Watson, speaker, high-performance wellness coach, healer, and she's here to support the leader with impact and profit while feeling good doing it. Thank you for making the time to be here today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. It's a joy to pour into your community, and I'm ready to rock and roll some epic information. <laughs> Excellent. Let's get into it. As far as everything went, we were talking about how to shift your emotional state and create a healthy high-performance environment. I want to get into that in a minute. But to get started, I'd love to hear when it comes to high-performance, peak performance, all of that stuff, how did what's this, How did you get into that? I mean, was it just something you've always done? Did you discover it along the way? Yes, what's the story? Know, I've been a high performer majority of my life, and it started in sports. And I was very good at sports, in particular track and field. I ended up going on a full-ride scholarship to University of Wisconsin-Madison, on a track and field scholarship. I ran middle distance and became a two-time All-American. And that began my journey in being a high performer. But what happened during that journey, um, I had what I'll call the traditional form of high performance, of peak performance as an athlete. Burn yourself to the ground, push through the emotions, push through the pain, physically, emotionally, mentally, keep going. And that worked for a while, everybody. It did. Yeah. And what happened is I continued in my athletic career. And then ultimately, as I started going into other parts of my life to create high performance as a leader, as an entrepreneur in other areas, that started not working anymore. And I started kind of breaking down mentally, emotionally, physically, then everything started breaking down the things I was trying to create. And that's when I started stepping back and going, wait a minute, is there a healthier way to sustainably high perform during growth and change and adversity, feel good doing it and actually get even more acceleration in my performance by doing it a different way. And yeah. by the way, the answer is absolutely yes. So my career started in athletics and I've been able to create frameworks for my own journey from the courses I've taken from becoming a healer, then a coach and now speaking about this to help people that are high performers that really want to live the best life, but not tank and hate yeah. their life in the process. And that's what I'm here to chat about because I think it's so important for those that want to make a difference in the world. <laughs> So when you realized you were breaking down, be it physically or mentally, what did you do to, if it's akin to like digging a hole or breaking down in that sense, what did you do to climb out of that hole and get and start repairing the breakdown? You know, from a physical sense, you know, I was always around as an athlete, a lot of amazing practitioners and physical therapists and doctors from a mental health sense, you know, mm. I was starting to have a lot of anxiety and depression. And the more I pushed, the more I started feeling that. When I was in school, um, mental health and support around that was still a little bit taboo, Mark. So for me, it, it took a lot of courage. I'm going to encourage all you now. There's a lot more out there. You know, the, the whole mental health isn't as much of a taboo. I think there's still some limitations there, but we are growing and that not being taboo, but also growing modalities to help you at an accelerated rate. When I went through it, I really had to kind of take that step in courage and kind of pick myself up by the bootstraps, do my research and look at things that could help me, and then finally step out and talk to people about it. I started with my family. You know, I started with other mental health practitioners to really start digging myself out of that hole. And I found beautiful modalities from traditional to what I call more holistic modalities to help people accelerate getting out of the hole, mm -hmm. but also not just getting out of the hole, getting the awareness that they're kind of starting to tank and remedy it before the problem becomes a big problem. So you don't have to go where I went. So for me, from a mental health, emotional health perspective, I had to kind of do a little bit more of the digging, the behind the scenes, dirty work, and then finally take a step in courage to allow people to see that I was struggling. And that created the momentum of finding other tools and frameworks that now I teach for a lot of other high performers wanting to feel good mentally, emotionally, physically while they're kicking butt and taking names. <laughs> Well, when you hold yourself up from the boot with the bootstraps, where did it start? Was it mental and then get your body back in order? Was it get your body back in order so you can think clearly a little bit of both? Where did that start with the bootstraps? Yeah. So for me, because I was a high level athlete and I w after even college, I got into 
physical therapy school and I always valued physical health. So that was never a big deal for me. I always had a good amount of physical fitness. I ate well, I slept well as an athlete. I had to learn a lot of that physical stuff to create performance from a physical Mm -hmm. health state. So for me, it was really picking myself up from the bootstraps of the mental because it not only was affecting long-term my physical, I found, but affecting more importantly, the other things I wanted to start doing in my life, relationships, making money, doing well in school. It was starting to create decrease in brain clarity, brain fog, um, started getting low energy. So for me, it was picking myself from the bootstraps from mental health. I will say this, everyone, you know, for me, I started in the traditional approach to help with mental health from, I'll call it quote, talk therapy. By the Mm -hmm. way, I believe in counseling. Just for me, that wasn't overly therapeutic. And also antidepressants I tried, which actually for me, and I, we can go into that story a little bit, actually made it worse. So I started looking at what I call non-traditional approaches, researching, talking to people in my community, diet changes were huge for me. I found that I was, I had allergens to certain foods that actually were connected to brain inflammation as well. I started doing Mm. things more than talk therapy, like cognitive remapping, EMDR, tapping, other things were actually going to create an acceleration in neural rewiring versus just talk alone. Again, you guys, sometimes we'll do well with one or the other. I find that the combination of traditional and holistic seems to bring the most out for people as far as results. For me, it would be more toward the less traditional approach, but I started getting traction. (laughs) Like we get one step out of the hole. Then I started learning more courses and guess what? My frameworks allowed me when I stepped into PT school and then out of PT school, exactly what I wanted to bring to the table for people coming to me that had physical, mental, emotional, whatever it was, because at the end of the day, we all have a little bit of something of all that. And I could now treat everybody as a whole because of my own journey and expertise in optimizing mental, emotional, physical wellness. So getting out of the hole was just one step at a time, finding and trying things that worked and didn't work, exit off and move on and not giving up you guys. Some of this can take some time, especially if you dug into a hole like I did, but that's why I want to chat with people about it now when they're noticing signs and symptoms, how can we help you from tanking really hard and actually Uh move out of it more effectively? (laughs) Something depending how to hyphenate it, one or two words, but you mentioned neuro rewiring. Yeah. What so, it, dig into that a little bit because I think that's yeah. going to be important. It's going to, unless I'm off off base, it's going to lead right into the peak performance. So talk a little bit more about neuro rewiring. Absolutely. So you guys, our brain is going to, as we continue to age and grow and have experiences, wire a certain way. Okay. And when I say wiring, all we all have a basic brain that we want to optimize. Neural rewiring is looking at nerves. They are the connectors of all of your systems. Okay. I'm speaking specifically of the body and the brain right now, specifically in helping you become mentally healthy, but this also goes for high performance. When we look at things that we want to change for me, it was like, I want to become more mentally well. I want to create high performance. I want to create behavior that is aligned with something I desire. This goes for anyone. You guys, we have to start breaking down patterns of nerves that have been ingrained in you from certain ages, certain family dynamics, certain histories from you. If there's patterns you don't desire anymore, but you want a new pattern to have the life you desire, we have to start breaking down what we call nerve wiring that has led to that behavior and break it down and build up into a new pattern, a a new wiring. Think of roots of a tree, okay? Yeah. They grow and they get deeper with time and age, with adversity, right? They know how to grow during storms, during change and growth. And when they get these roots, awesome, they have stability in something they now produce that's beautiful. The same thing with our brain. You guys, if we want to wire our brain to have deep roots, nerves are the deep roots to connect to our brain in a more powerful way, we have to learn during growth and change, just like nature, adversity, how to create a pattern in our brain, deeper roots that are aligned for a positive behavior, not a negative one. For me and my mental health, how could I create behavior that was aligned with a better mental health versus a poor mental health. This took the nutrition, the cognitive EMDR remapping that allowed my nerves to start going, oh, she's making a different choice than what she did over here with this branch, with this root. She wants to do something different during growth, change, adversity. Interesting. However, 
doing this every day, you guys, just like going to the gym once every two weeks, you're not going to get the results. The brain is no different. If you desire, in my case, to create a better mental health, I had to get on the mat, I call it, take action every day to allow this rewiring, these nerves to grow the roots, to connect to the brain that was connected to creativity connected to solutions, connected to optimizing my frontal lobe to have good judgment of if I do this, this happens to allow my brain to start dumping happy pills, endorphins, dopamine into the system. Yep. But it took one day at a time. So when we talk about neural rewiring, it's really about creating new roots and new patterns to your brain and you guys, because nerves are throughout your body and your body to do something different. It requires certain techniques that I've mentioned. We can name some other ones to start breaking down, rewiring to a certain place. It's a really important concept I want you guys to get here. It's not just about neural re rewiring to your brain. It's to your body, okay? Your body keeps the score. Anything that's happened in your past, it holds on to in your body. That's why when something happens in your present that seems similar to the past that you didn't like, you get that anxiousness in your body. That's mm -hmm. your body responding saying this has happened in the past the similar thing we have to train our body not just our mind like this is safe i have an adversity this is giving me a reminder of something that hasn't felt good in the past and i've done something that didn't maybe work out how can i take with this information for my body my brain that wants to kind of pull down shut down and do something not good for me and yeah. step in and create a deeper route to do something different. So when we address the wiring in our brain and our body to get on board with a new thing and do it day in, day out, that's when the wiring starts happening to choose more of this. Mm -hmm. This is something we didn't want in our past anymore. And that just takes getting on the mat. <laughs> okay. This is, this is cool. Now, okay. You bootstrap, you, recognize negative patterns, replace them with positive ones, maybe even add a few positive ones from what you said. So once you're in a, a good, let's say good, not great, but you're in a good state of being, you're no longer in danger of slipping down that hole as much as you possibly can be. How do you get to peak from I'm doing good and I'm not in a hole to yeah. peak performance? What, what does that look like? It's such a great question. This is where healthy high performance starts. You guys, a lot of the clients I work with, we do have to work through some of this stuff, some more than others, the mental, emotional, physical stability. Now that you've created what I call that stable root system, that stable restoration that the body yeah. now knows what it feels to feel good again, what it feels to feel safe again. Now that we've moved that out, that can take a little time. Now that it's like, okay, now that I feel good, at least pretty good, the body, the brain, you guys, it's one of our top six human needs. It actually desires challenges. It des desires changes. It desires to be pushed. That's what peak performance is all about. But doing it in a way that doesn't make you tank back to where yeah. you were before. So how do we do that? First and foremost, everyone, before we go into a couple different tools, all of you high performers, I really want to think about this and write this down. I want you to write down what is your current relationship to high performance, peak performance. What does that mean to you? And not just what it means to you, but how you get there. And what I mean is, what did I tell you? My idea in definition of peak performance meant mm -hmm. I had to push through the emotions, feel like junk, kind of be exhausted, kind of be unhappy to attain my peak performance and success over here. It ended up tanking me. Remember I said, what's a healthier way? How can I have a different relationship with peak performance? Then I, for me, everyone, start writing this down. What does it mean to you that could be healthier? For me, I was like, instead of doing this for others to get the accolades and look, Jennifer arrived again. That was part of, and as an athlete, I got a lot of accolades. I started shifting, like, what if I was doing this because I was excited about the mastery of it, that I was doing something that was growing me and growing what I know was a gift in me and something I wanted to give to the world and the ups and downs, it didn't matter. I just wanted to master something, to master my craft. By taking and shifting your perspective a little bit on the relationship and stop making it about everyone else. You guys, yep. peak performance. I know you guys are thinking, all of you, I've had it. Instead of it being about everyone else, you being peak performance for the accolades, you being peak performance because everything's now that you've arrived because you now have the BMW or the house or whatever it is, the six, seven figures that you have, 
What if you turned it around and said, it's actually about my growth and something I really desire to master. Mm -hmm. You guys get, write this down. Your words are your worlds. Your words are your worlds. And when you start shifting in your mind and saying it out loud, this is where I started, you guys. I want to do well in my business because I know I can help people heal. This is not about me making millions in front of other people. And I did make really good money, but it's about me mastering a craft of healing because I want to help people get it when it was my growth and I was doing it for my growth only, not for accolades. The game completely changed. You guys, my energy, my peak performance, not only accelerated way beyond what I imagined, but I felt good doing it because I changed my relationship. That is first and foremost, your first step. And when you start changing the way you talk about yourself, words are your worlds. You change the way you talk about it to the world. Okay. Think one, about that. One yeah. thing real quick while we're on the subject, how do you, and I think you're going here. I just want to make sure we get there is how do you, you're in the hole, you're bootstrapping, you're not slipping. Then yeah. you get into peak performance do you, is there a way to stay in peak performance or does staying too high, too long burn you as, is it like a chicken in the egg scenario where if you go too high for too long, you burn out or do you get there and stay there? Yes. And that's, and that's the next part. So yes, you've got now, you're now more stable. Now you're creating a different relationship to performance. All that you guys is going to allow you what he just said for one to have a higher bandwidth. Mm -hmm stay longer and higher in some type of peak performance. Okay. What we just did, we got you out of the weeds. We now are changing the relationship. You're getting into a higher frequency. The brain and body is understanding. It's actually fun and great to be in this place. It feels safe. It's going to start increasing your bandwidth to stay in whatever peak performance, AKA quality work towards success means to you. Write those things down. What you need to understand, I really want you guys to be really thinking about what I'm going to say here. Do I believe that you can have peak performance, high performance every day? Yes. Wow. However, I'm going to say this. Life gets lifey. What I mean by that answer, I really want you guys to hear this. This does not mean you're going to hit a home run every day that you're in your peakest performance. What I mean is, is that let's say you wake up that morning and your kid is sick and you have to cut out your entire first half of the day because you have to take them to wherever they need to go, or you wake up sick, like something takes you out of what your normal quote peak performance day will be. You guys, some of the tools I'm going to give you will allow you to still stay in the peak performance for other things that you can do that day. It may not be having all the meetings getting the sales call because you had to now cut it out of your schedule, but you can still salvage your day and make other things that happen that day be quality. I want to be very clear. Peak performance doesn't mean you're successful in all the things and knocking out the park success every single day. Peak performance, high performance means that whatever happens to your day, that you're able to get out of the weeds, back mm-hmm. into your lane and allow some type of quality peak performance to happen in your day. Now we can go down even further on the weeds. What, like, what does that all mean? Some of that is subjective. Like, okay, I got my first half of the day, not, you know, taken away from me, but how can I create some meetings or some other things to happen in the middle of the day? We do have to lower the bar. You guys, as peak performers of knocking on the park with 20 things every day, because that isn't possible. Okay. So would that, would that lead to burnout then? Exactly. Exactly. So what happens is sometimes when we get our day taken away from us, like I just mentioned, we panic and go, well, I'm going to squeeze all 20 things in at the end of the day and try to get it done. What happens, everyone? Half that stuff you don't do quality because you try to put 20 things down at the end of the day. And what you just said happens, burnout happens. You guys, I'm telling you, life happens the way it should. Okay. There might be a reason why your day was knocked out the first half of the day. And if you're allowing the willingness to say, okay, my day has changed a little bit. What can I do? Two or three things at the end of the day that I can have peak performance in. I, you guys, this is physics. Instead of pushing and doing 20 things and getting burnout in that low frequency, and maybe do two or three things in this higher performance. What I have found and what research shows, you feel high vitality in it. You get the quality work done. You actually get more success from that. 
you actually get more success from that. And then you go into the next day and some of that same momentum is continuing to happen instead of panicking and trying to squeeze everything in the end of your day because what happened at the beginning of the day didn't happen, okay? You got to know how your brain works. It does not do well with squeezing things in in panic mode, okay? So, so in that case, would less be more? Yes, 100%. I want you guys to get this right now, what he just said. We've gone from high-level athlete to now talking about business or being a high-performer in leadership. In America, at least, we are not doing a lot of physical things as business owners. We're doing a lot more in our mental head during our day to move the needle forward. Is that fair to say? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. When we're in that mental state of performance, wanting to create performance for the day, you do the best when you're in a calm state of being. When you're not in fight or flight, you're not in freeze, you're not panic, pushing every, everything in, being in a calm state. This is where you get to get the creative zone going off, the solution zone. You get more articulate because you have higher brain clarity. You have better connection with people, better connection on sales calls, better creation content when you're in a calm state of being, a healthy state of being. Because they show this in research. Majority of people post 2020 leaders were tanking because they were spending most of their day in a fight or flight freeze response and quote, pushing through it. But we're going to suck it up. Guess what happened, you guys? They not only tanked mentally, their profit went down. They started getting disengagement with team. Their sales calls weren't going as well versus I'm going to dial in and get healthy and get more in a calm state. Even if I don't do everything that day, I'm going to do three things quality in a calmer state. Guess what happened, you guys? Those teams actually started making more profit, higher productivity, team engagement. All that started happening. I work with yeah. these people. Okay. So it's not about trying to push everything into a day. It's about taking what happens during your day, learning tools, which I teach to get you back into a calm state when life gets lifey and find two or three things that you can do during your day because your brain likes that now. It's like, wow. He's calm. I'm willing to do a few things quality. And guess what happens? Those three things quality versus 20 things burnout, you get more productive, make more money and create that high energy essence that your body gets used to that rolls into the next day. I so see this all the time. Once you get, we looked at getting out of the hole, the bootstrapping, the not falling back in, the getting to peak performance. Sometimes you can burn out if you get try to be too peak performance or too long, less is more. Yeah. That's a lot of ground in a short period of time. If someone says, okay, I get it. I love peak performance. I totally get what you said. Yeah. If you were to tell them, if you do one, and it could be something you want to reiterate, it could be something new. Yeah. If you say, if nothing else, do this one thing to get on track to be a peak performer, what would you tell them that one thing would be? You're going to laugh when I say this, but you guys, this is gold. Write this, write this down. If you guys want to be peak performance, high performance every day, take what you can, create the momentum create the impact, create the profit and actually feel high energy. Do it. Dance, dance, dance. Things I, I did not expect yeah. to hear on a podcast. You win. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this is the big down. I'm going to tell you right now when you dance a little bit, I dance almost every hour on the hour for like 30 seconds to a minute in between calls. doesn't matter if the call went well or good or bad or something bad has happened at, at me. The day's going haywire or something good. You guys dance. It is shown in research. Everyone dance is the number one. You guys look this up. Number one activity to move quote energy, yuck, you know, bad emotions yeah. through. This is research just like food. You guys dance move emotions through, get out of the clutter of whatever your day is, has been, or is maybe not going as well as this effect or as expected, or it's going really well. When you dance, it opens up, people call them chakras, but they are energy points in your brain, your throat, your chest, your gut, your pelvic floor, your legs that actually activate higher energy frequency. Okay. When you dance, you optimize energy in your brain. You optimize energy in your heart. You optimize energy in your gut. You optimize your entire body to go on performance. That okay? is I don't, freaking awesome. I'm telling you guys, whether you're in a bad day that we just mentioned, half a day, or like, man, this is going south, or you're just riding high, like I'm in flow state, everything's going well, go higher. You guys, when you do this, I kid you not, this will start rewiring your brain and your body to be in a higher frequency, no matter what's going on out there, thus equaling 
higher performance. It does. I'm not talking about everything gets successful in the day. I'm talking about staying in this peak performance of whatever you have going. You guys, if you do this, I guarantee you're going to DM me. If you do this, I challenge you. I invite you the rest of this week, every hour on the hour, whether you're having a good day or not so good day or a great day, dance for a minute to your favorite music, you guys, and get back in the seat. And I, I am excited to see what happens to you with peak performance, to your sales calls, to your team connection. It is a research based. It activates your entire system, optimizes neural rewiring, dumps happy pills, motivational dopamine into your system. You guys game over. If people started dancing, I'm not kidding you guys. If people started dancing instrumentally throughout their day, your peak performance over any other tool I give people my coaching programs will significantly help you stay in sustainable high performance more times than not than people that don't game over. (laughs) That is a beautiful way to end with dancing. I'm going to dance a little bit today and try it out. If people want to get a hold of you, what's the best place to find you online? Yes, I am active the most on Instagram at the or the Jennifer Watson and on LinkedIn at Jennifer Watson. If you guys have questions about this podcast or you're interested in going deeper on this, there's a lot of things we can go deeper on. This scratches the surface, my friend, and we want to continue to create higher sustainable performance that's healthy while you're doing all the rock star things you want to do. So I'd love to give that to you. And honestly, just as a free gift, Mark, I would love to give them a three-step. I have a video series on high performance to help Mm -hmm. you along with dancing that can kind of regulate you if you're having one of those tough days and you want to get back into that healthy high performance. I'd be happy to send that link in the notes for you guys and just give it to you because I want you to rock star it. (laughs) Thank you so much again, Jennifer. This has been absolutely awesome. Thank you. And scene.